prosecutors also had evidence that linked Rafferty to many aspects of the murder, like phone calls from in and around Guelph that day, around, you know, key times of the murder, as well as DNA evidence. So, Tori's autopsy revealed many things about her death. Um, there was photos of her autopsy shown at the trial of her in decomposition, but they thought that decomposition was so far ahead that they couldn't exactly confirm rape, but they could assume. Um, all but eight of her ribs were broken, as well as having a lacerated liver. Um, so, defense presented. Minister Alfred McClintock's, she confessed to her whole part in the murder on April 30th, 2010. She was charged with the day, the day she pleaded guilty to first degree murder. She had provided enough evidence for the court to believe her confession and place her at the scene of the crime, as well as giving some evidence to Rafferty's presence there as well. Um, Tori's mom also had ties to McClintic. They were considering breeding dogs with McClintic's family because they also had Shih Tzus, as well as Terry being an Oxycontin dealer for Tori's mom. Um, in Rafferty's trial, he pleaded not guilty, but although he never testified for his own defense, which doesn't make sense at all. Um, his defense stated that Tori was offered to him as a sexual gift, but he then declined when she was offered. Um, Rafferty's defense stated that McClintock had raped, murdered Tory, but there was no rape, no nothing involved. Um, it was also testified that Rafferty had left the car, and when he had come back, Tory was murdered, and he just helped clean everything up. Um, his trial was also considered to be high profile since of the nature of the crimes, and everything that had gone on in the trial, consuming the media and everything around that. Um, so, to start off with the prosecution defense, I think that they had a really, really strong defense. They had a lot of evidence that linked Rafferty to the crime, and it was solid. It really, really was. I think that their case against him was very, very good, and that they couldn't have had a better star witness other than McClintock, although sometimes her testimonies weren't exactly lining up with everything else. Um, considering McClintock's confession, I give her props for confessing. It was a really big thing to confess to something like this, since knowing that it's going to be so controversial in the media, and she was going to get some hate for it. We all knew that. But she did it anyways, to put herself at, okay, I did it. Um, Michaels, he was just wasting time. I don't think that he had a very strong defense at all, since a lot of it was a lie. Um, we all knew he was there. And I think he was just wasting more time by saying, like, I didn't do this, even though he never actually testified for himself. Um, move on to the decision and the verdict surrounding the case. After McClintock pleaded guilty, she was sentenced to life in prison without parole for 25 years. Um, she was only found guilty on her credibility of her confession. Um, they considered her story to be true. Because she provided so much evidence in her confession to ensure that she was convicted. If she didn't want to ensure that she was convicted and tell them that she was guilty, I think she would have not included so much evidence for her own conviction to show them that, yeah, this happened, I was there. Um, it is to be noted that, before we move on to Rafferty... That there was some inconsistencies with McClintock's story for Rafferty's trial and her confession, like I said earlier. Um, Michael's trial happened in London. They thought that in Woodstock he wouldn't get a fair trial just because that's where everything kind of started and he knew so many people there. Um, there was evidence found including pornographic related material on his laptop. But it couldn't be considered in the courts because there wasn't a proper search warrant for the police to find this. Um, that's also one of the controversial parts of the case because there was this evidence and everybody kind of knew about it. But it could not be brought up in court because it was brought up illegally when it was found. Um, Rafferty was found guilty of her murder, the rape that caused bodily assault, as well as the kidnapping of Tory. He was given the same sentence as McClintock. Rafferty's verdict was supported by the evidence. 
and Judge Heaney said, which was the judge that did Rafferty's case. Um, next we're going to move on to the aftermath of everything that happened in this case. Um, Tori's mom does her best to avoid a lot of things that have to do with the case. Um, things like hammers and garbage bags, obviously, because those were the things that were used to murder her daughter. Um, she's become a doula ever since then. She got a new job, which is helping people birth their babies. And she feels like she could do it because of her daughter and helping people. Um, Tori's dad is finding things really hard, as we all would. Um, even after the trial... He's still advocating for his daughter's legacy, which is helping him move on. You know, he runs the, the protest and everything that happened with the aftermath of McClintock and Rafferty. Um, you know, he prides himself on, I want to help my daughter. This was her legacy, and I want to I wanna continue that. Um, Tori's brother, he has a hard time, too. Um, he's scared to go places because of everything that happened. He feels remorse for that day because that day was the first time she was allowed to go by herself home because she normally walked with him. Um, he walked home with friends that day and he still feels like he should have walked with her because something different could have happened if he was there. Um, he still goes to Oliver Stevens Public School, or at least until before he graduated grade 8, because Tori went there. Now, to look at the whole family, the whole whole Stafford family they um they got rejoiced Tori's dad and mom and her brother they rejoiced when Rafferty and McClintock got their sentences to know that Tori's killers and rapists were gone they weren't here anymore and they weren't hurting anyone else they were so happy about that um so let's look at the aftermath of Terry McClintock um, in December 2017, she was moved to a Saskatchewan Healing Lodge. When this decision was made, there was so much public outcry about it and protests over this decision of the government to move her here, which is understandable because, you know, she did so many brutal things to this small child, she doesn't deserve to, to go there. She doesn't. Eventually, though, she was transferred back into her original Kitchener Correctional Facility, the Women's Institute that's just up there in Kitchener. Um, she said when she had done this, she had lost her residual liberty and was asked for compensation when she was transferred back to Kitchener. And she never really got 